Happy Monday, April 18th to you. I'm Carl Azus with your daily delivery of international current events. And of course, that includes what's happening in Ecuador and Japan. People in several regions of Western Ecuador are recovering from what one resident called the worst experience of his life. A major 7.8 magnitude earthquake struck on Saturday night. It was strong enough to flatten homes, knock out power, and buckle highways across the region. At least 238 people were killed, a number that the country's government expects will increase as rescuers search through the rubble. Portable hospitals have been set up, thousands of police and soldiers have been deployed to affected areas, and mobile phone companies are giving free text messages to help people locate and communicate with their loved ones. This was the deadliest earthquake to strike Ecuador since one hit in 1987. The country's located along the Ring of Fire. It's a horseshoe-shaped region around the Pacific Ocean where much of the world's earthquake and volcanic activity happens. Japan sits on the other side of that ring, and the southwestern part of that country has been reeling from its own series of earthquakes. A strong magnitude 6.2 tremor struck the region last Thursday, and then a major 7.0 quake hit on Saturday. Dozens of people were killed in both of them. And because the region has gotten 165 aftershocks so far, as well as bad weather and the threat of landslides, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe says finding survivors is a race against the clock. The military has been called in to help people here, too, delivering food, blankets, first aid supplies. More than 760,000 homes don't have power. Almost 400,000 don't have running water. And how some of these homes were constructed has made the difference in whether they're still standing. So we are in one of the harder hit areas of Kumamoto and the damage as a result of these two earthquakes really can be felt uh, in very different ways on the same street. So look to my right here, you can see one of the houses that has no doubt been one of the harder hit. It is absolutely unlivable. Uh, the family that live there, frankly, cannot return home unless they rebuild. And then you look here on the left side, uh, my left there, you can see this house, which sustained damage in its own right, but you can see that a family could might return to this home at some point. Uh, and that really gives you an idea of how much of a role infrastructure and building materials really uh, play when it comes to earthquake damage. And so this house on the right, probably a little bit older, probably made of more brittle material, and the house on the left a little bit newer and could handle the kind of force that we've seen from these two earthquakes. But whether you are the family in this house or the one to my left, uh, you've had to spend the last couple nights in uh, evacuation shelters. And so really you can't overstate the impact that these two earthquakes have had uh, on families in this area. From ocean exploration to space exploration, NASA's pressing forward with its twins study. One of these twins is Scott Kelly, who recently returned from spending almost a year in space. You see him here getting shocked for science, probably not as fun as the ISS. But it's part of the body and brain tests that NASA's giving him and his identical twin brother, Mark Kelly, who stayed on Earth. Scientists hope these tests will help them learn enough about the effects of space on people to prepare for a long mission to Mars. Scientists say human curiosity and decision-making are reasons why people should be aboard. 
But the plan has its critics. They say it's dangerous, expensive, and some say better suited to robots, which are less sensitive to the extreme environment of space. Exploration of our solar system is perhaps the most extreme bodily challenge. You're motion sick, you're uncomfortable, you're disoriented. That's because the human body is a complex network of bones, tissues, and cells designed to suit our environment. Here at Johnson Space Center, everything from food to spacesuits to exercise routines are designed so humans can survive in a world we simply aren't built for. What happens to your body when you're in space? As soon as you arrive in weightlessness, uh, the fluids start shifting in your body. Your organs of balance in your inner ear immediately sense there's no gravity pulling down on them anymore. All of your joints and your muscles also sense that. We know about these effects because humans have been consistently living in space for over 15 years on board the International Space Station. That can be somewhat and we're learning even more about how our bodies react in space after Scott Kelly became the first NASA astronaut to spend nearly a year on the ISS. As you spend more time in space, you lose muscle mass. Your bones gradually lose calcium. They gradually lose structural integrity because they're not fighting the force of gravity. It sounds simple, but exercise is one of the most important activities for astronauts. On board the ISS, they dedicate about two hours a day to it. But this is not your average workout. Squat down just a little bit. Okay, like this. Ooh, hello. Yeah, yeah okay, that feels different. When you were in space, can you describe the changes you noticed in your body? More fluid will go towards the head. Right. And so you'll sometimes feel a little bit stuffier, like you've got allergies or something like that. You can lose up to 2.5% of your bone density in a, in a month in space. And this is very, very important part of counteracting that. But what about on a deep space mission? If we ever get to Mars, do you think we'll have machines like this up there keeping us fit? Well, these machines take up quite a bit of space right. on board the International Space Station. So I think if we go to Mars, there's going to have to be something new, something probably a little bit smaller, a little more compact, something along the lines of a, a rowing type machine. NASA is currently testing a miniature exercise device on the ISS. Just as critical as exercise is what we put into our bodies. The honey coming out pretty well there. In order to maintain their health and maintain top performing crew that are going to fulfill all their functions and have a very successful mission, we need to make sure that they're happy with their food system, that they want to eat it the entire time. I gotta say, astronaut food is much better than I expected. On a mission to Mars, the food needs to stay good for five years, a difficult challenge for food scientists. So they're also working on growing nutrients in space, like green peppers, tomatoes, and lettuce. But the point of traveling to deep space is not just to stay inside a spacecraft. We want to go outside and really explore. Anywhere outside of Earth, really, you need a spacesuit that has a functioning life support system because the pressure environment is such that your body can't survive. Like around the space station, temperatures range from roughly negative 250 to positive 250 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a massive range. Yes, it is. And your body wouldn't be very happy in that environment. On Friday's transcript page at CNNStudentNews.com, we received a roll call request from a special administrative region of China. Located on the coast of the South China Sea, we're starting in Macau. It's where you'll find our viewers at the University of Macau. Moving northeast and crossing the Pacific, we arrive in the city of Anchorage, Alaska. The Trojans are online at Romig Middle School. And in the city of Hutchinson, Minnesota, Hutchinson High School is on the roll. Hello, Tigers! makes sense that someone would be pretty excited about moving into a $30 million home. And some of these little guys could wait. This is a march of the penguins. They're on the move from their old habitat at the Detroit Zoo to a brand new one, which is 33,000 square feet, has two underwater tunnels, diving pools, and lots of coal. Granted, some seem more thrilled than others. A couple wanted to just chill with the crowd. But even if they seemed a little flippant or indecisive, wondering what'll we do next, their new home's like a new world for their wide web defeat, a sort of exciting and new beginning they couldn't penguin to imagine. I'm Carl Zeus, and these puns are for the birds, y'all.